Good afternoon. I am pleased to present today our efforts to use multimodal teaching to improve student apprehension of general physics in an English teaching environment. And this time we're working with electromagnetics and thermodynamics. Um, the people involved in this work have been Charity Grace White. She's located at McMaster University Department of Physics. Apu of Chathardi, my student here at Yenze University, and myself, a teacher at Yenze University, and we are very thankful for the support received. Okay, the challenges we are facing in teaching general physics in English to engineering students at Yenze University are twofold. One, the students have trouble understanding the physics. Secondly, they have trouble with English. We combine the two together and students start to tire easily. I tire easily when I'm listening to Chinese. They become disengaged and they skip class. So I really can't, if I'm in a lecture based course, I can't really blame the students. It's very hard. So how can we overcome this? That's what our target is to try to do. Our goal is that students will feel the physical meaning of equations, not just memorize formulas that they apply, but they will feel these equations and feel that what they mean. Um, we hope that they'll also understand physics is experiment driven, not we write a bunch of equations and then apply them. No, we do experiment first, then we, then we learn these equations to summarize the experimental results. We want the students to remain engaged in class and not just turn off with their cell phones or not attend. And finally, we hope that they will start to enjoy physics and in the meantime have their English improved. These are our goals. So how are we going to try to do this? First, it, our algorithm is as follows. We start each unit with a pretest. This is an electronic pretest test so that students can get an assessment of what they know and what they do not know. We then continue on using a guided discovery, making use of PHET simulations. In other words, students are guided through answering questions and hopefully discovering the equations we'll be learning about in that section of the course. This is then followed by, they are then given a pre-reading, what part of the textbook they should be reading, and we then, for that day's lecture, and then we start the class. During our class time, we start off by doing a worked solution from the previous class's homework. You know, step by step, making sure students understand step by step. And in order to do that, the previous class's homework is submitted electronically, so I know which problems the students had the most trouble on. And those will be the ones we'll concentrate on. We then follow up with a smartphone game, which sort of tests whether they actually did the pre-reading. Students usually enjoy this and race to see if they can be first and there may be a small prize. I then discuss the big idea of the lecture using a web page and that's the first hour of our two hour contact point. During the break I, use, I want to try to take out some toys for the, for the students to play with that illustrate the physics concepts that are going to be talked about in the following lecture. I then move into lecture mode in which we use PowerPoint slides. I lecture for 10 minutes and then students respond with flashcards, physical flashcards, not cell phones, not anything else. They've already put their cell phones away and then continue with the lecture, PowerPoint, le le PowerPoint lecture, flashcards, 10 minutes, maybe five cycles. After that, the class ends, students are assigned some homework to do problem solving and we repeat this cycle for four times approximately and then we have a post test um, in which is both electronic and paper. Okay, and that, that's how we basically do one unit. And each and the class will have four units. Okay, so let's consider. I want to focus on the guided discovery because that's been our main emphasis and time spent developing. It involves three aspects: a web page, worksheets, and simulations. Considering first the web page. The web page basically introduces the students to what the activity. It tells how they're going to do it. It gives them a link to be able to download the worksheet. 
It also gives them links to all the PHET simulations that they will be playing with during that class. At the end of the class, each group hands in one set of worksheets or guided worksheets. So that's the web page. The worksheet looks something like this. They have questions. Okay, for example, they start by observing how the simulation works. Like reset the simulation, show charges the wall and only one balloon. Rub the balloon on the wall, what happens? Describe it. Rub it on the sweater, what happens? Describe it. What happens when the balloon touches the wall? Um, write down and try to think about why. Release the balloon midway between the wall and the sweater. What's going to happen? Why do you think it happens? Okay, and as you finish those observations, you can then make some interpretations about the experiment. And what can we interpret and what conclusions can we make given this information? So the idea is to try to help the students to think. So, and then here's the PHE simulation. So for example, here we have the sweater showing its charges, charge balance, charge balance. Okay, so we start the simulation. Okay, we rub on the sweater. Rub, 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 rub. Okay, they observe that, oh, more negative charges go onto the sweater. I pull my thing away, more on the balloon. Sweater's left pause, I pull my balloon away. The sweater immediately goes back to the, I mean the balloon immediately goes back to the sweater. Sorry about that. Okay. So those are the three main components. These are um, available free on the University of Colorado website. Okay. Um, we'll do, okay. Now, what are the results? Okay. So we've added these simulations. We've added these toys. What, let's compare the active learning situation now with before and after. Okay. Um, this course has four units. Basic electrostatics, which is basically high school material. Advanced electrostatics, which is somewhat new material. Magnetism and thermodynamics, which is 100% new. So these are the four units. And how we do it is, um, so the baseline was a lecture-based course. And I have the mean and the sigma for the lecture-based course. I have my post, then I have my active learning based course, my new one, I have a pre-test for active learning and a post-test for active learning. And finally, here's the normalized gain. So normalized gain, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is a way in which we measure how much students learn in a physics course. It's common, it's been used in most published physics papers um, in, in the area of physics education. So it's basically described as basically the post percentage of the students minus their pre percentage over the maximum final mark, which would be 100 minus their coming in mark. And then the G factor tells you how much they actually improved. Now for, there is a lot and lot of statistics on this, but for lecture based courses generally independent of teacher, the normalized gain for is approximately 0 0.2. Okay, now let's look at our statistics. Okay, so for the material they already are relatively familiar with, the gain is 0 0.3. Okay, a little bit better than a lecture-based course, but not too significantly improvement. However, when we fo focus in on the new material, 0 0.55, this is a significantly increased normalized gain and showing that active based, the active teaching style is really being effective for these students as they grasp new concepts. Now I would really like to be able to have seen the thermodynamics and the magnetism results because thermodynamics is 100% new but due to COVID-19, oh well. And as you can see, I, the, the effect on sigma has been sort of, I don't know, has been mixed. All right. In terms of, so continuing on with the results, there's also a few other collateral results. One is we have now developed a number of these four guided discovery worksheets. Each of them is two hours and they are complete and available for anybody to use either on our website and a number of them are also on the University of Colorado website. Um, unfortunately, because of the um, pandemic, we could only access efficiency on two units. And also, un unfortunately, we had really hoped to an analyze the effect of toys. But all the toys were bought for the concepts of thermodynamics and magnetism, which I found most more difficult for students. 
But due to COVID, none of them were ever used. So students did not get a chance to play with the toys. So that aspect of the course, we were unable to test due to the um, pandemic's influence. Continuing on, what's our next steps? Very clearly, the next step should be ideally to teach the complete course in the absence of COVID-19 to get a comparison with the lecture-based course to give a complete gain statistics, as well as to understand if toys are useful or not useful. Unfortunately, this will not be done, as I have now been assigned to teach computer programming courses in the future until I retire and will likely never teach physics again. Mm. And just uh, related referee journal papers, we were able to publish two journal papers out of this um, work. Um, one was um, utilizing active learning to engage engineering students in a freshman physics service course taught in an EFL environment. Okay. And the second was teaching general physics in a COVID-19 environment insights from Taiwan. So trying to take advantage of the problems with COVID-19 to try to uh, make some interesting work. Okay. Thank you very much for, and I, we're willing to have any questions.